This video is further exploring the subject of dyeing the aluminum. For today's video, I've cut four pieces out of the aluminum stock visible in the foreground. These are uh, meant to simulate, say, battery tubes for a laser or flashlight project, and they'll make good example pieces for today's dyeing efforts. Just as a note about the anodized process, if you have a bunch of parts in a fairly small bath, like I have going here, you'll notice that as the bath warms up, the current drawn will increase, which can lead to further heating. What you may need to do in such a case is have a bowl with the ice water in it surrounding and cooling your anodized bath. This won't be necessary here because this one isn't going to heat up enough to cause a problem, but if you did get excessive heating you can get a situation where the hot acid bath is actually dissolving your anodized layer as fast as it can be produced. So keeping your bath from overheating is something that's worth keeping in mind. As you can see, the process does give off some fumes from the foaming and fizzing. This is why it's a good idea to have good ventilation of any area that you choose to do anodizing in. Well, it's time to remove the parts. Flips off. I'm simply dumping them into a rinse bath right now. We'll rinse the acid off and then we'll start dyeing. Up first we have Caswell Orange and Caswell Violet dye. So what we're going to do is take a piece <coughs> and we're going to start it out all over in the orange dye. You can see it's slowly taking the orange. We'll let it get a build of orange on here. It's getting better and better. We'll just let it build that orange color for a few minutes. pretty obvious what I'm doing, so I'll pick up the video when uh, that's orange enough in another minute or two. Well, a couple of minutes later, the part is now a golden orange color. What we're trying for here is a fade. Now, when you mix orange and violet, the result would be a deep red. So what we're going to do is start dipping it into the violet. As we can see, the original tip of our piece is still the golden orange, but the fade is taking, and the bottom of this piece
has now become reddish. That piece is now ready for the boil bath. Well, let's try a green to blue. The green is taking, much like the yellow did, in, or the orange, excuse me, in the first example. We'll let this part get to a little green, and then I'll pick up the video when we're ready for the blue. Well, we have green, so let's move on to the blue. As we can see, we're getting a light green to greenish blue fade. And there we go. We'll see how that looks after the boil down. This next piece is starting out in the red dye. As we can see, it's already getting a uh, pink color to it, so we'll let that red get on there a bit, and I'll pick up the video again in a moment. Well, this part's been in the red for a little more than five minutes, and it's now reached a medium red, so that's good enough. Let's give it a little blue and see what kind of a fade we get. That's coming along nicely. And just for fun, let's put a little black on the very, very end of it. Just to try and deepen the color at the very end. Well, we'll give that a try. As you can see, the dyes can be mixed for different colors and different effects. I'm going to try and do one uneven color on this piece. I've allowed it to dry as if I was going to dye it either with solvent-based dyes or color it with Sharpie markers. But here I'm just going to hold it above the black dye, take an eyedropper, and just randomly blotch it and streak it with a little of the black.
and we'll take it and what the heck why not a little red see what happens With a little red wash, and now over to the blue. Let it sit in the blue for a while, and I'll pick it up again in a minute. Here I've allowed the workpiece to dry after anodizing, and I'm going to splatter it with dye using my thumb and a toothbrush. So I'll grab a little violet dye and put a little bit into this uh, cap here and get it onto the toothbrush. And we'll get a uh, spatter going on here. Like so. We'll let this violet dye spatter work its way nicely into the piece so it's well colored. We'll give that a few minutes and then we'll continue. The violet's been on here a bit, the splatter, so let's give it a water dunk. Yes, the splatter's gone into the anodise. So let's finish this off by dunking it in orange. We'll let it stand in the orange. Uh, how are we doing? We'll let it stand in the orange for a bit, and then I'll pick up the clip again shortly. Well, we've been in the orange dye about five minutes, so let's have a look. Yes, the piece now has an orange wash to it, so this is ready for the boil down as well, and we'll move on to the next piece. For this last piece, I'm going to try for uh, a gunmetal color. So, we'll start by putting some blue on the piece, and we'll let the blue get to a good color depth. It's already starting to take. We'll pick up the clip in a few minutes when there's enough blue deposited on there. Well, we've been in the blue dye for a few minutes, and we now have a nice medium blue on our part. This blue would get deeper if I left it in there, but it's about deep enough that I'm going to switch to the black now. Well, the black is darkening the piece. 
it'll have to be left in here for a few minutes too in order to get to the color we want. Well, here's a look at our six finished pieces. The three color wash pieces at the top came out nicely. There's clearly a color fade from one end to the other. The fourth piece from the top uh, does have a marbled appearance to it. Our splatter of orange and violet came out beautifully. And the piece I tried for a gunmetal finish on the bottom, well, I think I needed to leave it in the black a little longer. So there's still a fair hint of blue where the light catches it, although it does look generally a grayish black, but I needed a little more black on that one. And here's another closer look. As you can see, a little creativity with the dye can lead to some interesting colored results. Hopefully you found this little video useful, and it's given you some ideas towards completing your own anodizing and dyeing projects.